property. Um, with that, I'll turn to my left tonight and ask if there are any liaison. On I have none at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Marcy? Um, the only thing that I had was um, uh, there was an email that we got about uh, this gas pipeline that, that's been yes, proposed yeah, in North yes, Reading. Yes. And I actually um, sent a message off to Dave Mancuso because I'm wondering how that plays in in terms of Reading Municipal <coughs> Light and the need for, we, we do actually, yes, as Reading Municipal Light, gas is, is yeah. one of the supply components. Yeah. So I asked him to attend that meeting. Great. So um, yeah. he, he, I haven't actually heard back from him in terms of it. Um, what what he has said is that it is a, a more complex issue than it appears on first blush and so before we take a position I think and we that's want actually, to get a little more information. That's actually a meeting I think of the folks that are opposed mm -hmm. as, a, as opposed to a, a, a hearing by some permitting entity. Sure, so. sure. I, I just think yeah. that there could be components of that that are important mm -hmm. to know from, a, from a, a, sure. an RMLD pr perspective as well as from a yeah town perspective yeah. and then as a, as a resident who purchases power. So just, just different components. And we all know that, um, that subjects like that, which are multifaceted, usually get reduced to sound bites and nibbles for people to digest. And it's never Absolutely. accurate enough to understand <coughs> at that level. So, so, um, so fortunately, Dave has, has attended the meeting and he's right. gathered some information. I just haven't had a chance Good. to connect back with him. So. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Where is that? Uh, no report, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Halls. None today. And uh, for myself, uh, no report. Um, all right. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to make a public comment? Okay. I hate, hate to just put you with that right now. I'm aware of the Tennessee gas pipeline issue. I, I know the board has sort of not voted or said they weren't terribly interested. Um, town council called me yesterday about it. He's been approached by someone else wanting some information, so he was getting my take on it and your take on it. He's going to do a little more research. Um, I think the, the well, RMLD think that's input good. would be very right. helpful. Mm -hmm. he, he's very knowledgeable on the issue. Okay, and good. And um, has his own opinions on the opposition's mm -hmm. you know, point or not. I just think you have to look at all yeah. the positions and not just from and, one um, perspective. I, so. I met for the first time this morning with some of the area managers and mayors, including the new uh, town administrator in North Reading. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want to ask him in front of everyone, but I will tomorrow <laughs> to fill me in on some things that are on our common border. Okay. So the latest uh, geography of the pipeline does put it in red, mm -hmm. in the very northeast corner through wetlands, essentially. There's no residential neighborhood impacted. There are residential neighborhoods very much impacted in North Reading mm -hmm. and many other communities right. to the west, which is why the opposition has sprung up. So after those two conversations, I'll be, and plus Dave will be a right. great idea. Dave will be a good a good resource. Probably I think, early so. September, and this is in, not an urgent issue. No, no, it's it's, it's a long way to go. that's yeah. what he yeah. said. He said this has got a long way to go. So. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, that other entity was that another town reaching out to town council? Uh, a group. A group. A group. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll move directly to. Subject uh, of steel <coughs> click fix. Bob, you must have a presentation, or Jane, you must have a presentation. Oh, yeah, Jane, way out of time. Jane Patel, our business administrator, and Joe Huggins, our assistant DPW director, uh, have been the most involved in this. And uh, just as a preface before Jane says anything, I've tested the system anonymously twice, and it's worked very well. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know it was you? Are you sure it was really anonymous? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't know it was me the first time. He okay, just clicked. <laughs> I did tell her the second time. The service was a little better the second time. <laughs> Jane? Um, so, as Bob mentioned, uh, this is fairly new. We, had, we got a grant um, a few months back. It was a two year grant. Um, they originally started with the city of Boston, and they were working with C Click Fix. Um, and then it sort of expanded into, um, I think, as many as 50. Yeah. <coughs> right now, are using some form of this. And Boston calls it Citizens Connect. And, um, you know, some communities, mostly it's C Click Fix because that's the company that we're working with. So, um, the we used to have a DPW request form on here, and we'd have it on every page, and people would click on it and put, you know, pothole or whatever. So I kind of went back and looked 
over two, three years and said, what are people requesting? Because I don't want to have 400 things on this for the request. Sure. So mm -hmm. we looked at the heavy hitters, and there was about a dozen or so, and so that's what we put into the C-Click fix. And it, it can be expanded into many more items, into other departments and divisions. But right now, DPW is the only one using it. And only recently using it, I'm going to say, they all got trained through June. And I'm kind of doing some one-on-one -on -one training with a few people. But um, So residents would... Um, it's right down the bottom. You just got to scroll down, yeah. There yeah. You go. So what used to be just a line item that said DPW request form now has a C-click fix. And it's, it shows people report a pothole, street light, whatever. It's sort of an open-ended issue that they can report. And it's very easy. I, I kind of time myself a few times, and it takes, you know, maybe 15 seconds to put in something. Um, and if you're on a computer, you would, you know, type in um, the address. Just click Next. Tell, say what you want to report, pothole. You can say more about it. I can just say it's a pothole. Some people kind of expand on that a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and put in pictures. And put in pictures, which is, you know, nice. And, and the reason I brought my phone is because I was playing around with it and I uploaded the QR code from the phone. So you can just, wherever you are, report something, snap a shot, and it shows up here. And then just submit it. I'll have to. Now, every user needs to log in. They can log in as a guest or whatever, but we need to have um, an email so that we can get back to them if we need clarification. But there's, what? There's no registration. No. Okay. I, I have regist registered the town employees so that uh, when they get phone calls, oops, I don't want to do that. When they get phone calls, um, they can log in, like, you know, mostly um, the administration office. That's it. So, um, yeah, very quick. So that's a history of all the issues that have been reported right. so far. Right. And you all of these. Look at the chronology. These green ones have been acknowledged. That doesn't mean that they have been fixed right. but somebody's looked at somebody them. has looked at it went in and said okay either put it on I'm trying to get them away from their papers but either put it on some sort of sheet or you, you know they can also go into the reporting thing and just click on you know potholes and George Shaziri knows that anything that's either open or acknowledged he can print out and get a report and hand it off to somebody is it closed loop where once you did triage it here and it goes green and it gets fixed it Either turns to a different color or yes, yeah, it goes from red open to green being acknowledged and then blue where it's um, closed. And eventually, if you look at there's reporting, you can, um, I should log into the reporting, you can see gray where they're all archived issue, issues. So we can keep a history of them from the beginning nice. and just, you know, at the end of the year, say how many trees did we trim, how many potholes did we fix, that type of stuff. Yes, okay. Yeah, did you say there is a uh, portable phone app for this? Yes, yeah. Um, it's not the whole web page. It's a lightweight. Oh, yeah. Okay. To the small uh -oh. Uh -oh. That happens every so often. Does it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Because you're here. Because you're here. Job update. Something's going on with the Wi-Fi connection in this building. Just wanted to make you realize how much fun it is to sit in that chair. <laughs> he was trying to get me to sit. <laughs> Let me give you a little background on the program. Um, I don't know how many of you, some of you will be familiar with it. something called the CIC uh, grant. It's a cha innovative challenge one. And we, we'd applied for a few years. We skipped last year, but we applied the two years before with large and elaborate projects and got turned down. I don't know why, because it was the best project, clearly. Uh, and then, so Boston <coughs> got a grant and did this in the first year. So then they started looking for other communities, and I was pestering them for a couple of years to pick Reading. And the first time they said, you're not geographically diverse enough. I was like, what does that even mean? Mountains, lakes? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then last year they finally agreed to let us in. We sort of used some back channels and they said, yeah, okay, you can join. 
So through through the grant which Boston got, then then their mission was to expand it to other communities. Mm -hmm. um, so as Jane said, it was a three year grant for Boston. We're in on the last couple of years. We got a, t a year t from a year till December. Um, at that point, we'll have to make a decision how much we like it or not. So because of that, we decided let's just roll it up to a couple of places, the town manager's office being next after DPW, and see how it goes. We don't want to get the whole organization wrapped up into it if it's not going to be something we're going to continue. So we can't it sure report looks to awesome, though. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, traffic, uh, sorry. Uh, Street lamps out. You can't use it. I don't know. Is that one of your choices? Yeah, that's street lamps I think it might be. Yeah. Yeah. You can just pass it off to um, the yeah, app running light. Um, there's, there are some like canned messages that I put in there to kind of help the guys a little bit so they don't have to sit there and type. Um, and that's one that I didn't put in, in there. Um, I can connect it to that. Um, but sometimes it is something we want to look at. Yeah. Or, you know. Is there another in there where it doesn't fit any of the above? Somebody can yeah, there's another. The other goes to Joe and Jeff right now. Um, but here's like just a quick thing on the reports, which... Cool. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, it, when you get a lot of data, you can go into the Boston website, for instance, and look at their history. Yeah. They get dinged frequently. There's lots of pictures. Graffiti is a big thing yeah. in there, whereas we don't need that, thankfully. Uh, but the reporting tool is really nice. Well, oh, that is nice. Well. Yeah. 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 Days to close is yeah. great. Perfect. Like those, are, those are called nice. metrics. Yes. I didn't set up any, they have like service level agreements. I don't want to scare the guys too much, so I haven't set those up. But that is something that once they get used to doing that, we should be able to Well, and once do. you gather some of the baseline data, right. that's, that, 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 that allows you to do that in yeah. a way that's very reasonable. So right. So you can set goals for the department. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can you set some stretch up. goals. That's great. And yeah, yeah. Excellent. It's great. So my office, Paula gets most of them. I get some of them. Um, the calls that are often DPW related that don't go to DPW come to us. So that's how I've been testing the system is I get an email or a phone call. I just go right online and describe to the person what I'm doing and they can do it next time. So one of the examples up there on King Street has involved using the system and email. Jane and I have been corresponding with yeah. the guy outside of email. So you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve kind of on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, there's some you know, language that the system uses that isn't necessarily what I would choose. Mm -hmm. So it's right. a little confusing for the other guy, but once you've been through it once, it's fine for the second time. Um, I think the, the beauty of this for our residents, you know, especially as the generations evolve, you get your smartphone, you take a picture, you know, if you have whatever that GPS device is, you don't need to tell the address. It just knows. It just knows. Mm -hmm. You just send it literally 15 seconds or three seconds. Mm -hmm. You send a you send a picture. You send the name of the title. Done. You're done. <laughs> and then when you get home or whenever you want, you can go online to the website and look at any progress. And so it's a little bit daunting from the workers' side. <laughs> that, but, but it's great from a customer yeah. service standpoint. Like oh, and this is great because you can see now here are some of the gray ones that have been resolved yeah. and the ones that have been looked at yeah. that are sort of still in process. That's great. It's yeah. daunting, but it's at least. And you can There's see the one that you just put in, right? Which is nice. Say that red is the one that you just yeah, put in? Yeah, the one I just put in. Yeah, George would be thrilled to see that The fact that you can just that access one. the text of what somebody was reporting at any right. time is, is great. Yeah. It's also very helpful, um, as Paula will attest, my stack of pink slips are this high for messages she leaves me. <laughs> and I sometimes, quite often, thumb through them to find out, didn't this person say something six weeks ago? If it was all in there, it'd be great. Yeah. Right? Because not only would I have that information, but so would anyone in the organization. So right. if they're suddenly dealing with the same address, they can go up and look by address and say, wait a minute, something else Anything has already happened. Anything that delegate some of these routine requests yeah. off to the people who need to be doing it, it's yeah. going to get done quicker, right. and it allows you to focus on what you need to do. Yeah, can, well, you, can you sort here on, to your point, can you sort on the, the uh, citizen who reported? Or? I don't know what capabilities we have. To the system mm -hmm. is capable of that. I'm not sure we got that version. And how much yeah. would it cost us in year well, four? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to know yet. But you know what? If you start, if it's you start to look at how much time you're saving oh, yeah. and total, how total cost and, of ownership, total cost I get it. Ownership, I get it. Right. 
Yeah. And right now they don't have a true like work audit system here. I've talked to them about like are they planning it and they are planning it. Oh, they are. But okay. um, yeah, but you know what it looks like and can we tie it into you know our system as far as you know money and the whole bit. So that's something that Joe and I have talked about. Like you know, so get the guys used to this for a couple of years and getting metrics and whatnot, and maybe we'll look at a different work audit system after it. This is great. It lowers the barrier to getting something registered. And it already assigns it to the writing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it takes right. all that friction out of the process. And I like the test drive before you have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was great. Nice. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, why don't you talk a little about the facilities work order system? Because that was just put in a few years ago. And yeah. We, we at uh, the school department purchased uh, something called School Dude back in 2006 before I started over there. And one of the first items I was responsible for kicking off was getting that system up and running and populating it with all the equipment for all the facilities, all the buildings, and um, sort of getting the thing off the ground and then training the users in all the buildings. Everybody, it's more or less restricted to like principals and department heads um, and then the facility staff. So it, it took a better part of a year to get everybody the, you know, the full buy-in because we were doing the same thing. It was all on paper at that point. Everybody would put a, either a fax or they'd call you up. Mm -hmm. So we would have to train people when they'd call us, did you put a work order in? No. Okay. <laughs> Is it an emergency? Well, no. So slowly people started to use it and it was a great tool and we extended that out into doing preventive maintenance as part of the work order system as well as facilities rentals. And all our preventive maintenance, all our PMs would be self-generated. It would come out at a certain point every six months, depending on what the piece of equipment was, which is what Jane was talking about at some point. A, a bigger, more robust system will do that for us. We can track, like, we did, we, it helped us budget at the same time because we knew what we were spending on equipment. We knew if something was reaching the end of its useful life. So there's all kinds of ways to approach it, but the nice thing about this is that we're tracking stuff now. We're seeing where the guys are going. And then eventually, if we can go to a system that can, you know, it'll help us do budgeting. We'll be able to see where the workforce is moving, how much we're spending on this piece of equipment for it, or, or you know, this facility, this ball field, or whatever it might be. This is great because it's getting the guys out of the habit of doing everything handwritten. Um, and the residents are, are taking part in it. And it's, it's, it takes a while to get people acclimated to it, but it's good. We had a, a C-click fix come in tonight, and we responded to that. I got the call from Paula, and we responded to that, went out, looked at it, and um, routed it to George Cesare. It's going to get uh, looked at tomorrow morning, first thing. Right. Something like that. It's not, it's not an emergency. Um, we get the emergency calls anyway from the police department. It's, it has to be right away. We know that. But this is stuff that we do. We might not see, even though we're traveling the roads every day. So this is a, a great start. So this is big data meets little Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bob, you know, we talked many sessions ago about celebrating our successes, and it's, maybe this is a crazy thought, but if we spent a little bit of time meeting this, maybe just to illustrate this, for whatever the reason, that it's an interesting meeting of, mm -hmm. yeah. of uh, town officials, and uh, let's, let's explain, maybe spend five minutes just to get a little bit of PR. I agree, and I was thinking also, whether it's September or November, I was thinking we've never really formally introduced document storage to the public either. That capability exists through the website. You can go search through old Minister Your Heart's content. Same idea. I've done Same that. idea. Yeah. yeah. So those that needed it know, and those that don't, don't. I might be useful to put a YouTube video up that kind of talks. Uh, some folks learn by listening. Some mm -hmm. folks learn by watching. You on yeah. there. I'm <laughs> serious. You just use the camera in your PC. Assume it doesn't blue screen on, and you can actually. We could do the ice bucket challenge. The, the ice bucket time. challenge right <laughs> after. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, thanks. Board? No, thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, Joe, Jane. <coughs> okay, we have a actually about eight minutes before our public hearing. Uh, do we go out, take go out of order here? And did we uh, uh, get public comment. We did. Yeah, we did. We did earlier. Yeah. Any public comment on C click fix? Yeah. Yeah. Is comment? it possible to have something like that out in front of the clerk's office? You know, self, a self-help kiosk? Yeah, we've, we've talked yeah. about this three places, well, maybe four. Assessors and collectors upstairs mm -hmm. is two. Mm -hmm. uh, town clerk and then down the end uh, in building. Okay. We've talked about having a kiosk. Um, having either a, a big screen on the wall with a keyboard or having a screen that rotates back and forth. You'd educate people as they come yeah. in, even if they're not using it. Yeah. 
And even if you had something at the town fall fair to introduce this. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, that would, I think that would be That's great. actually yeah. a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, and letting people know they can download the app, <coughs> like, so they can, they can do it. I mean, I just can't be the one to explain that. <laughs> I'm yet. pretty sure we can find someone who can. I hope so. I'm open. <laughs> Must be some teenager that needs work. Oh, my daughter's oh, could find it. <laughs> well, the people that are going to actually download the app already know it, so you don't really have to <laughs> do too much other than get it up to them. Just tell them it's there, right? But uh, really, go on the Boston website. It's phenomenal how big this is. It's a really about well done website. How many times have I asked you about this thing? Like I've been asking yeah. about this thing for a while, so I'm yeah. glad that we've got it. It looks, yeah. it looks really it, good. It took us a long time for us to say I yes. Know we're working, <laughs> working hard to get in there. So. We have about eight minutes to the public hearing. To, to um, I propose we jump ahead, but Dan and John, Dan Insminger and John Halsey, have come back with a candidate template from a an ask from I think two meetings ago regards. Reviewing Bob for 2014. This, this is a partial job just to show it to you and then we'll mm -hmm. complete the thing. Uh, two self criticisms first. I think the font needs to be bigger. And I'm going to take the uh, glasses could be stronger. <laughs> yeah. There's no need to repeat that rating one, one through three. We can debate whether it's one through three, one through five. I'm going to put it in a footnote mm -hmm. and save some horizontal space. Great. I think we could get the whole 31 questions probably on to 12 to 15 pages of this time all five people's responses yeah. okay mm -hmm. side by side with this yeah. format with a bigger font even so mm -hmm. this is what I'm proposing I uh, shoot your comments back to Bob if you have any to make tonight uh, great and uh, we'll complete it we do a C click fix app for this mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> we need to do that. And Bob, would, have you taken a look at this I haven't seen this yet no oh. Well, yeah, but I, I did think a copy maker want, your work? Want, want input from Bob as well. Yes, so <laughs> so I can't read pretty, it. Pretty straight. I know. <laughs> that's, why the, that's why the font needs well, to be half the <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll put this on the website. No one will be able to read it. No. They'll, they'll fall asleep. It's on the um, website. You should be able to zoom in. So. I, I think you're going to have a hard time figuring out how to do comments. I don't, And I don't have yeah. a suggestion yeah. of a better way. That, that, well, I thought of putting a general section at the end. Mm -hmm. I'll do that anyway. So Maybe. People can do that instead of per. I don't know. Is it beneficial to have per goal comments, do you think, or just take I it? actually think it is. Just uh, in I case. And then if people yeah. want to put them in, they do, and if they right. don't. It, it just means that you might not be able to print it out, but who needs to print it out, really? Well, and the other way I've seen this done, and you could do it, is you individually each get one form. Right. So there's not three columns, there's just one, and so it's a little condensed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You put all five together, and then you have a summary. Mm -hmm. And the summary may or may not have the comments because you can just flip to the yeah. next page. Just yeah. a numerical summary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. That'd be one. Well, you just hide the columns for anybody who's not you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll send the full, you know, 13 column thing out. You can hide the I columns. think this is fine. Everybody yeah. has Excel on their PCs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How could you not have Excel? <laughs> I know which version. <laughs> um, it'll work with a converter on. Uh, okay. I'm kidding. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> you should be off I have all of them. <laughs> that version is not supported anymore. We still have a few minutes here, yeah. so um, okay, preview the warrant if you want. Or we yeah. could do, what about discussing the remote participation, which we might yeah. be able to yeah, finish up be before we get fair. to the next one? That's fair. Why don't we jump yeah. ahead to page 22 for tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If I might, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I asked all the department heads, including the schools, for feedback. I got very little. Um, very few have used it. No one objects to it. Um, some see no value to it because they don't have board members absent. <clears throat> but I don't see any downside to this. I, I, don't I would say I, when we first did this, I think it was in the fall, I was thinking about the technology and, and whether we should go to video or not, and I don't think so. It would be clearly better for those of you that have tried this. You'd have been better off. But we can't support that town-wide, right. honestly. Right. So, um, you know, I'd ask you guys, because this board has used it the most. There's yeah. two other boards I know that have used it, both well, very happy. I, I know Historical could not have enacted their demolition right. delay if they did not have the remote, because they needed all four members in the forum that night to make that yeah. ruling. So it did. The, the only issue of note is, was the evening Marcy was in, I think it was actually two separate evenings where people couldn't get through. I think you were involved in one of them, where 
the phone here wasn't ringing. It wasn't ringing, right. yeah. And uh, finally, we resorted to the you know Egyptian method of paper, papyrus, have somebody walk in and give us a note and say, oh, hey, okay. Kevin wants to call you. <laughs> uh, and that was the only way. So there is some technical issues here with this phone. With a new phone system, you won't have those issues. And the only other feedback is after September town meeting, shall we say? I was going to say that was like a teaser. That, that should be yeah, that should be soon. Yeah. The only other input would be Skype, just to the extent yeah. that some of us mm -hmm. are in other the, the, far the flung. problem is that you have to have it projected. So and or just the audio part of Skype. Oh, the oh, audio part of Skype. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. See, however, that's done. Yes, well, you could project the video, and they'd pick it There's up no on video. RC. It's just, audio. it's just audio. Oh, if they don't have a computer with them. All you're, do, all you're doing is okay. meeting the letter of the law by participating by voice, but you're Skyped in. Yeah, yeah. got it. That, I, I thought, I'm sorry you weren't able to call from Mexico. I was really looking forward <laughs> to testing that out. <laughs> yeah, how was TJ? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. That's another story. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, but if the board's happy with it, I, I have a uh, revised policy just to cross out the trial basis. I didn't put a motion in here, but if you're willing, I just suggest you um, move to approve it, and we'll leave it as permanent until further notice. I, I would, I would move to approve the language as, as amended um, in the packet. Uh, okay. Do I have a second? <coughs> so, Dan seconds the motion. Any further discussion? I, I mean, I think it's a, a, actually an important thing. I mean, the, the, the way things work, and and if you have people who want to participate in boards but they're not able to be there all the time. Yeah. I, I think you don't want to discourage them by saying, oh, I'm sorry, you have to be in the room every time. So. I think it's just a sign of the time that, you know, people are yeah. people are moving, they're traveling with mm -hmm. business, and, you know, I don't think that that should be a, that shouldn't be a stumbling block mm -hmm. to serving. Well, yeah. you, you bring up a good point, John, because I think at the moment it's limited to one participant. You can only have a single. You need a quorum in the room. You could Sorry, have two. You, you could. could have multiple. Oh, so you because could have of the technology. Policy allows but more than one, whether the technology does. It's we the almost tech. tested it. Once. Right. Would we be allowed to do that on a, off of a cell phone, a three-way yeah. call? We could do that. We, we have the technology, yeah. actually, yeah. to do that on most phones. I think so. <laughs> so we could support two external yeah. members. Okay. Does you this just, um, preclude us? It could be more for another board. Yeah. So would there, I mean, we all generally have a computer up and open and open. Um, would this preclude us from having a, a member Skype Skype in to us? You'd have to call that phone on Skype as opposed to Skype to an account on that PC. Instead of calling your Skype account, you'd dial the cell phone number or the handset number here on Skype. That's the only difference. Oh, so the I person see. that's yeah. remoting in must be able to be mm -hmm. um, audible in the room, and they must be able to hear everything that's being said. Right. That's, that's and, the if, and if you can all view them, so everyone else needs to view them, so it has to be up that, on here, so which shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I see. So but not every room has that equipment, which is one of the issues. Everyone has a phone, but not necessarily this. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. And don't forget the video if you're on video. <laughs> Um, I just, if you know, if you adopt this, mm -hmm. I think we should just continue to ask the boards on a regular basis because there is potential for abuse in this. Absolutely, if it's not used properly, Absolutely. but the boards will figure that out, or the public will tell us. Right. Absolutely. Any other comments before we take a vote? All those in favor of uh, this policy? Five zero. Thank you. And uh, perfect timing. It is now seven thirty. So, Dan, would you mind reading our? <coughs> To the inhabitants of the Town of Reading, please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on August 12, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on a request from the property owner for a second driveway at 420 Franklin Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the Town Manager's Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearings or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on August 12, 2014 to townmanager at ci.reading.ma.us. Thank you, Dan. Um, let's see. Do we customarily hear from the applicant, or would we go right to the proposal? Uh, if you want, I can George explain it. Overview. Yeah, George, George. <laughs> so I can get this down where you can see it, <coughs> since we have a narrow screen. Um, basically, there was a request from uh, 
Sue and Krista Ambrose, which I believe they're sitting right here, uh, to install a new driveway, I should say, recreate a new, dri new created driveway um, at a reduced separation than what's currently allowed by uh, the regulations. This plan here, what you can see on the screen, is actually a, uh, I believe it's a conservation filing uh, from back probably around 205, 206, uh, when the, there was a barn that you can see right in this area here. Uh, this hatched area was the existing driveway. The property at that time was subdivided uh, into two separate parcels and the, and the barn was uh, removed. Uh, actually, I don't think the driveway was removed at that point. I believe it might have been removed later. Um, this is This is our orthos of the property. And this is the existing house. This is where the old driveway was. The old garage was right here. Uh, this shaded area right now is what they're using for an existing driveway. And if you look at some of the pictures that the applicant has submitted, uh, this the red building is what is at one time was the garage, and you can see there's some paved area along the edge of the road. This open grass area right here is where the old driveway is, which was converted over to a grass field. Uh, what they're proposing to do, which I haven't seen, is to install a garage, I believe, on the towards the rear of the building, and it's somewhat hand drawn in here. They'd like to install a driveway in the location of where that grass area, where the old driveway is, and turn it into the garage. There's no other access, there's no other possible means to get to this. And if you look at the uh, aerials, <coughs> this one here, you can actually, this is our 2008 aerials. So actually you can see in 2008, the asphalt still exists. It just doesn't exist anymore. So they'll only be recreating this, installing a new entrance and, and hooking into the rear building. It, it, it doesn't cause any sight distances. It's it's a straight portion of the road, and I, I think it's something that's easily uh, doable. George, what's the width of the uh, separation? Yeah, lot to line to lot line in that. Lot line to lot line at the uh, curb. It's kind of a. Yes, Uh, let's see, this is 80 in this distance here, so I'm guessing about 150, 160. Okay. Uh, and that's from the PC of the curve. The separation between the driveway scales, I believe, about 75 feet, 70 feet. So is there a curb on the road there now? There's no curb. So it just, it not just goes right into the grass. Yeah, There's yeah. no sidewalk there. Uh, um, it's just a grassed area. The only thing that's paved right now is would be this portion of where they're using for the, their existing driveway. The rest is just on the grass, which you can see in these photos here. You mentioned in your prepared remarks, uh, maybe it was the town manager, that this is more of a pull-off, the existing uh, The driveway existing form. driveway is somewhat of a pull-off, yeah. Uh, there's, I think I believe one of their pictures probably showed a little yeah, bit better. Right I mean, this. Yeah. What's the point? It doesn't look like it's a real driveway. I mean, this, it looks like you, you just it's, it just basically come off the paved road. in this area here. And Max, actually, I don't even believe you use that as a garage anymore, right? There's no garage door oh, or anything. Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, <laughs> you have room to get one vehicle off the edge of the pavement, and, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, off into their property. Yeah, no, Frank said I would think you would want to be off the pavement. Yeah, as far as you can be. Right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, this I think it would even be you know beneficial because at least they can be able to get vehicles off the roadway and into the. You know, Are you going to have it as wide as um, the original one was? Are you going to? I mean, I see how it's skinny at the at the. Yeah, it'll only go. Probably no further than the trunk of that car on the left. Okay. Oh, I see. It's going to curve into where the car in the back 
It's a little hard to see on George's other document. Yeah. If I can walk the the yeah. the yeah. Is it you're going to be too wide? No. No, one wide. We're going to come in here and right curve. back. Oh, I see. Okay. That's what I mean. We, don't, we want to keep this as is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Okay. Kind of 12 foot wide entrance, something like that, on the street. Um, it gets all it gets all your cars off the street and away from the front of your house. Yeah. We've come home this time and there's like neighbors are having parts and people just are parked there. It's like look at our driveway, like we have nowhere to park now. And the police they love to park there. Yes, they do. I live down on Emerson, so I know you can charge them, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah
So I've sat down and just kind of started juggling some of the things because we don't really want to impact rates. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably beneficial to authorize a little more debt and then just reorganize the capital plan. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't affect this year's budget much uh, at all, and it probably won't affect next year's very much. Let's, let's turn to, let me just see if I included it. If not, I'll do it from memory. Uh, one question on number yep. six. In the past where we've expended the funds, you, we vote to rescind the debt authorization as we have here in Article 5. How is it in six we're transferring <coughs> debt authorization um, for a different purpose? Let me give you an example. For the library, we authorized $18.4 million, the full amount of the project. Right. Mm -hmm. We're all expected to pay 13 and change of that ourselves. Right. Um, for many reasons, <coughs> one of them being timing, we had to authorize a bigger amount because we're going to be on the hook for some period of time for more than the state sure. will pay us back. Sure. Let's say the project comes in at $18 million and we mm -hmm. borrowed eighteen point four. Then we would have extra money to transfer to another project because we'd already borrowed it. Mm -hmm. But if the project comes in at eighteen and we haven't borrowed that much yet, we have an extra 400000 of authorization that we just have to take off the you books. You have to cancel. So Article 5 is saying you've authorized more debt than you ever needed yeah. to borrow for some mm -hmm. projects. So it's a cleanup. It's just a housekeeping yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharon's going to carry it on the financial statements as a debt obligation, even though it doesn't exist and never will. Mm -hmm. So by voting to take it off, it cleans up the financial statements. And she doesn't five. have to carry it as a debt. She should take okay. it away. That's five. But That's then five. Seven. Then six is money we have borrowed Got already. It. Okay. It's already we just have to use it. There's rules about what you can use it for. We just have to transfer it to a like project. Got it. Okay. That and that gives sense. the West Street project that much of a cushion should the unknown bids come in a little higher. Which the longer they wait, the more likely yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Article 8, there are some somewhat significant amendments to the FY15 budget. Um, we do not expect to have free cash certified by September 29th, which means we can't use any, which would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Because of the West Street project's timing, though, we have 390000 of debt authorized and planned and budgeted for for that project for this year. We don't need it. Mm -hmm. We might need, I'm going to keep 40000 because yeah. we might have an interest payment. So we have 350000 of debt service to use for other things. Mm -hmm. So the biggest item is uh, $100,000 we're going to ask to be put into legal services. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll, the superintendent will describe it more thoroughly at town meeting. But effectively, it's a legal situation that has nothing to do with the town of Reading, but it impacts us indirectly in that the ongoing TLT litigation, we have been advised if certain legal things happen, and some of them have and some of them haven't, then we should be paying any further litigation costs out of our general fund, not out of our project fund. So if someone else has attached uh, onto all that money because it's a third party that says TLT owes the money. It's not going to affect how much we do or don't pay for the settlement. It's just a different way to pay. So we've just been advised we'd be much better off if this last step happens, which hasn't yet, for you to pay any further litigation, which will happen this year, costs. Not the settlement, but the cost out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the reason we really need to have a town meeting in September, because otherwise we don't have the budget to do that in legal services <coughs> until November. We couldn't wait till November. So that's a big driving reason. And then there's a couple of other, I guess I described. So we won't need the free cash to do that. Well, we'll have the debt service to use. We'll okay. have that extra. Because the free cash is not going to be certified. Is that, are we, are we behind on that? Or is it just that we're having this no, meeting early? Um, before, before Sharon knew of the debt service possibility, um, she could have figured out a way to get it settled, but she didn't want to promise it. So now she may or may not have it done by September I see. So, but it, it's kind of a. It, Usually it's in middle October. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, so it's it's actually on schedule. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're just going a little early. We're coming a little early. Yes. It's yeah. unusual to have a town meeting this fast. We almost had one last year this time in September for uh, schools, but we didn't end up doing it. Uh, and then we get to, into some zoning advisory committee and CPDC zoning territory. Um, I believe there's five zoning articles suggested, uh, and I think I've, made a mistake in one of them, but one of them is, is section one uh, just to be redone and section three to be redone, and those are fairly simple in paperwork, mm -hmm. I'll say. Um, and then 11 and 12, I might have mixed up the numbers. It might be four, six, and four, five, but in any event, 
uh, the suggestion has been to delete the mixed use overlay district and the wetlands protection district and I believe that everyone involved agrees they're useless including it's conservation. because they're not used so there's already duplicate items the mixed use is already covered by smart growth and the wetlands is already covered by other conservation stuff so it's it's just it's housekeeping. It's based just on the housekeeping. based on the size of the, the of our regulations compared to the state it seems to me that we probably have a lot more of those laying around we potentially do but these were are definitely yeah. signed off on and everybody's agreed to so we yeah. may as well just you know get rid of them and then another really useful thing to do uh, in September not wait till November is the medical marijuana right. zoning change because mm -hmm. that'll give the state some opportunity to have an adverse reaction and we can still react by November town meeting so when you close the warrant for November we're gonna want a placeholder in there in case something goes wrong with this right. at the state level so the moratorium expires somewhere in the middle of November or the end of November right, right around and Thanksgiving what and you the thing is with this particular zoning bylaw so if we don't we had the, the moratorium where we didn't have to do anything for a year but if we don't have a zoning change then there's no zoning and anything goes so we want to make sure that we've got that button down and we have it you know clear by then uh, when you say adverse uh, have we uh, I, I assume we followed generally accepted methods in just developing our own I, I, well we we thought we were doing that the first time when we voted it out of town so <laughs> you, just, you just never know yeah. um, there's two options in front of the, the ZAC and ultimately CPDC and ultimately town meeting uh, one is a 500 foot limit which apparently by all indications will easily pass the state muster or you know 500 feet from where kids gather or I'm sorry so, thousand, so the ZAC has has is in favor of the 500 okay foot. so that's not they they don't feel like there's there's no there's no okay. driving need to expand that because there's not a significant difference between the two so the two options so. were 500 feet or a thousand a thousand being more protective if you will um, the state has already gr uh, granted approval for 500s and said they would so, so given so that's we the think path that that's we're going I don't see any reason it won't be approved We've also had um, at least one meeting where we had the ARCASA folks involved and we've talked about it. And so, um, you know, we've agreed to make sure that they understand what's there and, and we're looking for them to support it because if we don't have it, then that's, and we, that is we on their potentially road. have a worse. That's on their radar screen. Yeah. I mean, right. I received so. an email today mm -hmm. as a liaison right. um, detailing yeah. that and, you mm -hmm. know, looking for comments and so, good. being prepared for, you know, supporting okay. that or speaking to speaking, speaking their to position. It. The one thing we, we, we have said from the ZAC perspective is we just need to be very clear that we're talking about a zoning bylaw here and it is not a for or against medical marijuana because that's been decided right. and that has nothing to do with this particular article. Is the thousand foot discussion uh, addressed anywhere else in the state? Has, it occurred, has anyone else attempted or <clears throat> I know it's being discussed. I don't know if anyone's actually tested the state with it. It, it doesn't make a significant difference. Yeah, there, it's not worth it, it's not worth the effort to do it. It doesn't it doesn't make a big difference. So yeah. okay. I, I can show you the the, the yeah. maps. Really, no 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 big difference. So. Yeah. What's the bylaw allowed to regulate? Just the dispensaries, the places where the pot may be grown off site, or the the middle men also where they can operate does it operate? we we does it affect any this of does not uh, my understanding is this doesn't um, affect the um, personal caregivers yeah doesn't affect that um, it's 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 the medical marijuana it's the store it's the retail we had one of those within 500 feet of the store right but but we don't have that ability I believe that the state That's regulations awesome. don't allow for that to be regulated so it can't in that be cultivated dispensed can it can one of these I think uh, cultivated can be regulated it, it, the cultivation there's some question about depending on how much and does that fall under yeah. agriculture I, I would so. ask Ray about that because I think he's the one who brought that up in mm -hmm. interviews he said you yeah. should regulate uh, the grow so. culture not too late to yeah mm -hmm. have they ever held a public hearing on it yet no no not yet they won't hold it till after you close the warrant actually sometime right. in September so. mm -hmm. yeah I'd like that conveyed to them and does it cover and the, the warehousing or the, to the extent you have personal caregivers the storage of it on site or the volumes Ray has said the language should be as wide as possible to cover everything mm -hmm. right and then it can be amended on town meeting floor to narrow in if you want to say don't do this don't do that but yeah he's on the already and the last I item is just a housekeeping one as a placeholder <coughs> just for um, any action any other board may take on summer out 
but don't know of anything yet. Or if are we aware of any petition? Uh, not yet. Articles? Lots of discussion in the community, but I've not been asked. And and just one other comment. Um, I'm going to meet with um, the chair of the Charter Commission next week. Um, I don't think he wants to give a report at September town meeting, but there is a slight chance that he will. Mm -hmm. um, he sent me an email this morning, and then I saw him later today. Um, they are very interested in holding a January special town meeting to dispense with the charter changes. That would be in time to then get it on the local election ballot. Wait, in, uh, but January? January of 15. To, so oh, like winter. we did last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Another sprint to the polls. Yeah. <laughs> so I Fight the snowstorms. I, I last attended a meeting two months ago. I would have said they weren't ready then. I'd say they have a lot of wood to chop. Um, town Council has reviewed the changes as of a month or so ago and said none of them are difficult, uh, none of them are challenging. It. They're all simple. And they're yeah. correctly under the scope of the Charter Committee versus the Committee? So, so far. Okay. There's been dialogue second and third hand, so it's not reputable, that the significant changes afoot. Oh. But, you know, because two people out of 17 discuss it doesn't mean that the majority has agreed to it. Right. So I'm just kind of sticking to the let's hear what they actually say as a commission. You're and keeping them appraised of, you know, conversations we've had here. About Not yet. I'm going to bring the chair involved in a lot of discussions because okay. yeah. there are some very timely topics being mm -hmm. discussed. Yeah. Now, yeah. Are they interfacing fully with town council regarding what they Not, not yet. Proposed? That's what we're going to discuss next week. Yeah. I think... The best solution is the uh, that Alan just directly deal with town council. Um, we've kind of done it secondhand so far, and I finally just got a list from them of requests for town council. It's enormous. Most of them I don't want to ask town council because um, I just don't think they're germane to right. the whole discussion. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to meet next week. But just so you know, our January town meeting is on the agenda. So if there are other zoning things. I know there's been a discussion about the recodification versus the other changes, right. this flexibility. Right. And I, I, I mean, my, my inclination would be just to, to get as much done yeah. as possible. But I, yeah. I think actually in November, a lot of it should be ready to go. Okay. So. Bob, is your understanding that earlier constructive input has been reviewed and, if appropriate, included? Or the Charter Committee? No. I've made some suggestions and they've gone the other direction, so I stopped suggesting. Uh oh. <laughs> mm. You know, they just may disagree. One, one of my suggestions last spring or fall, rather, was um, take as many uh, listed board committee and commissions out of the charter as is possible. Yeah. And just say mm -hmm. from time to time the selectmen will appoint boards, committees, and commissions mm -hmm. that don't have to be in the charter. So they went in and added a couple more. I, I, yeah, I don't think that makes sense. No, um, I because you don't I just want to have people that have don't to like vote that. on it every Doesn't time. mean I don't disagree with the boards or committees. It's right. just why do they need to be written in the charter? So the other thing is, I had actually have a suggestion in terms of a, a bylaw change oh, that's yeah. on page twenty-one that I think we should add to the uh, right. to the warrant. So uh, apparently, um, in in Ray looking at. What we have in our charter and our bylaws, the way that it's written right now, the duties of our finance committee are written so that they are only very specifically around uh, articles that are within the warrant. However, we have this whole section in 3.3.2.3 that is related to investigation, which I don't believe there was ever, ever any intention that, it, that that investigation was only related to articles. And right now, the way that it's written, um, uh, that's the way that town council is interpreting it is that that would be the only thing they can investigate as compared with being able to look at anything anything nature, which seems so, like that ought to be in their purview. so so if you look at um page 21 um under 3.3.2.1 duties this second paragraph here is is uh, the second sentence is what i've added so additionally the finance committee has the authority to investigate the books accounts records and management of any official town body or department for any reason as outlined in 3.3.2.3. Now this doesn't have, I don't think Ray's had a chance to review right. all of this, so that needs to still happen. So and then will the, this get into the so, so if you hang on, so one other thing that I have added is under investigation, what I've added is, um, and sh shall transmit such reports to town meeting and to the board of selectmen, so it's so that we're getting a copy of it as well as town meeting. Yep. Um, so that's, those are the, those are the two changes that I'm, and I believe that that's just 
really housekeeping for things that town meeting intended to begin with. I, I remember us coming up with this, and I don't believe that we intended this investigation to only apply to articles that were on the warrant. So, so my question, Marcy, is these amendments, which I think are excellent amendments, mm -hmm. um, will they need to be voted on at town meeting? Yeah. They would need to be voted on town meeting. Yeah. Yes. So we need November. to get. Do we need to get them in a warrant? It needs to yeah. be in the warrant. Yes. So on September second, when you close the warrant, this will be a warrant article. Mm -hmm. He's looking yeah. at it tonight, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a problem. No. But uh, you know, well, I want yep. us to discuss it tonight, and you okay. know, <coughs> it's out there. So. And, and the way the original language is written in three three two three, where there have to be a petition of 100 inhabitants, it seems to suggest that something extraordinary has, has happened and mm -hmm. you're trying to get a sense of the community. That's that's not a subject that would come before town meeting. That's above and beyond a subject that's right. a town meeting mm -hmm. where many of those same people are already in attendance. So logically, this appears to have been a general investigatory clause or investigatory section, but the way it's been Worded in duties, it just wasn't. Yeah. It yeah, wasn't. Not clear. It wasn't articulated clearly ways. enough. So, to me, this is merely returning the spirit of this language, the, the letter of it, to what the spirit and the intent of it was from the beginning. So, just as a just as a point of information for me, in, if you stay in that paragraph, yes, it further mm -hmm. goes on to say that they don't have the right to incur expenses, and that they need to clear that with the moderator. That, that doesn't seem like it's. Mm. The right. Well, then they take, trail. Out of their, they take it out of their own reserve. So the finance committee reports to actually town meeting. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, so do they have to wait? So the town moderator is able to make a decision mm. as to whether it. or not, if they decide to investigate something that's going to require an outside auditor, which is going to incur a you know an hourly charge, mm. they can't do it. Without permission of the of the moderator. That's the way this is written. Mm -hmm. They need they obviously so, they can't get permission from me. You might say the town accountant, but in theory, the finance committee could be investigating all of us. So right. who is Switzerland? Who's left? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. One would hope the town moderator. <laughs> but that's only one person. So that's, yeah, that's I just a little it, it is a little why yeah. I'm raising yeah. that. I, I mean, yeah. I honestly think you're talking about a finance committee that has nine members. Yeah. You have to have five members who are willing to, to go for this. It's it's a little hard to get five people all on board. True. But I think you're worried about the opposite case where the moderator might say no. Yeah, right. that's right. Could we well, I'm saying so does So do you, you let's say you have let's say that there's an egregious situation or a perceived egregious situation. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have it's a nine oh that you know, the finance, finance, finance committee says, says we gotta no. find out what's going on here. Yeah. Um, and the town moderator goes, I'm sorry, I can't was, spend any money. I propose a solution. Why not put it in the hands of the Finn Common Pointing Committee as three people? Is that possible? I would just suggest, um, I asked town council what are the options. Because mm -hmm. there is state law and the powers and duties of the finance committees, and I don't think they have the right to spend money without some kind of authorization. Without some authorization. And I don't think it matters what the vote is or any of that, but I'll ask. What do you think of is that a possibility? Um, that puts it in the hands of three people. Well, except yeah. it puts it in the hands of the, the town manager, the, no. the, no. the chairman of the board of chairman, oh, chairman of selectmen, chairman of the chairman of and, com, and yeah. moderator. Moderator. Okay. I think that's okay. I think that would make sense actually. Yeah. And then it's three people. It's not just. Right. Yeah, I, I, and I, it, this is not in any way casting an aspersion to our current town mm, moderator. Absolutely just, not. It's I'm just thinking about ahead. it in the right. in the grander sense of mm -hmm. a one person, should one person, a one have person that kind of power. Yeah. Right? yeah. You need <laughs> you need more than one person, and you need an odd number. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this this language that we're poking at now was in the original text. So this is maybe a future uh, issue that we just sidestep that they've done the past. It just seems like. While well, we're if we're this, making an, ag uh, an amendment, I think we, we try and do that amendment at the same time. Yeah. Is it the um, town appointing committee or the nominating committee? Uh, Whatever the committee, committee is. Nominating committee. I think it's the, I think it's the finance th appointment committee. Finance isn't it? appointment committee. Okay. So with that with that amendment, which Marcy is penciling in now, yep. um, are there any other thoughts before we? I think it's a, I think these are good changes. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent changes, okay. actually. Would anyone not favor putting this in as? Warrant article. No objection. Okay. 
I mean, do we, do we need a motion or do we, just do we need proceed? a you'll, you'll close the warrant we'll next week so warrant. you can do it back. And, 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 and actually, after you close, sorry, after you close the warrant, I'm going to have your vote on the warrant. Yeah. So well, and, and meanwhile, Ray will have an opportunity yeah. to take a look at yeah. it and make sure the language he all may find a few other works that he wants to um, in terms, terms of state Sponsorship, is this else. from the bylaw committee? That's a good question. I'm not I, sure. I'm always concerned about who sponsors articles because there's a presumption of support. So um, yeah. uh, maybe it's the finance committee. Hmm? They could do that. Could be. Why couldn't it be I think it could be, be any stronger. Of be, I mean, it look less self-serving. I, with I honestly, yeah. I mean, I'm fine with us supporting it from the board of selectmen if that's possible. I think it's just. I think they're just common sense. I amendments. think. I really yeah. think it's 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 more housekeeping than anything else because yeah. that's what was intended. It's just not the way that it actually. And this reads, doesn't affect us in that. Uh, from a and, legal and that's what I like most about it. It doesn't connect to us. How many at all. times we heard in town meeting the intention was yeah. right. right. Mm -hmm. What we meant to say. I, every time I hear that, I cringe. Yeah. <laughs> you have a chance to fix it. So you gotta write it right. This is um, improving or clarifying the actions of a different body. So mm -hmm. I don't see how supporting this or even sponsoring it harms it or no. harms our support of it. We're, right. we're not, we don't benefit directly from this in many ways. This is the. Um, yeah. Last recourse it, of a. I'd say it could come from us or by law. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think it should come from FinCom. Okay. That's a power no, grab. Right. That doesn't yeah. look right. Yeah. Yeah. That looks like aggrandization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, we have, I think, all left tonight is uh, minutes and executive sessions. We have so. goals. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Goals. Yeah. We goals. skip those. Goals. <laughs> goals. <laughs> Let's pull the goal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to um, speak up. I don't know how much time you want to spend, but I'll, st I'll start at a pace and you correct it as you need to. On page 24, um, I, I do want to point out in, in setting the goals up, I think this is going to be a work in progress for a little while with all of us, but I thought about the Reading 2020 groups and their, mm -hmm. per, their point. I thought about the financial forum we just had and made some notes. And then I also remembered the EDSAT tool I thought was very helpful. So we have three sources in addition to you, yep. you and I to really feed into this. Good. And I'll say my footnotes, I'm sure, are not complete, but, but they will be by the time this is done. Um, there's, there's a lot more here than was here last year in terms of specific items, but it seemed like there was a lot to do. Yeah. And, and what, what I want to ask the board to do is, um, if you're willing, I can send you this in a spreadsheet form, and for the next meeting, if you could vote on it like you vote on the budget cut. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it would help. I'm not saying to eliminate anything, but we should prioritize them. This sure. one's more important Absolutely. than that yeah. one. Absolutely. I think that'd be helpful. Well, this is going to be helpful, really, towards the strategic plan. Too. Yeah. Got to right. start yeah. to homogenize mm -hmm. these into, yeah. you know, kind of some pillars of support for the, yeah. for that strategic uh, plan. First one is fairly simple. I'm sorry. Did you want to constrain in such a distribution where you're looking for inputs? Is the sense from the board that this would be simply a prioritization, not a You only get five yes votes, kind of a thing. It would be a. I, I would say it's a prioritization, and I would say one of the choices is don't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if a couple of you say don't do it, that'd be pretty right. serious. And I'll yeah. just compile the right. results That's and share it with you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Some, some specific guides as to how we. And and I'll, I'm measure. certainly going to leave room for add in other thoughts. Yes. Do you have this in a? Do you have this in spreadsheet? I will. I don't yet. That's He's going to do that. No. Uh, I have a question about next year's uh, review process. Uh, this year we're per almost 100 percent basing it on. The goals that were set. Uh, is board interested at all? I've, I've seen managerial reviews done with a partial goal content and a partial general management skill content, like a you know management of staff, uh, labor negotiations, that kind of thing. Are you interested in pulling together anything like that? In one's addition? performance, but one's goal. To me, yeah. our focus ought to be goals and trying to measure results, not activity. Which yes, but in addition to that, well, there are generic. Generally, there's skills. goals and yeah. then there are competencies. And competencies. that's what you're talking that, about, are you the competency it. components. So right. how well have you exercised these competencies that's that right. don't relate to a mm -hmm. specific, Goal. I got this thing accomplished, right. but really relate to, exactly. you need to have good management skills to yeah. manage staff, yeah. you need to have good yeah. budgeting skills to be And those should be all things we, we whatever discussed in advance. We don't apply them they, to 2014. Right. They yeah. should all be applied, they should be discussed in advance and be part of it. And any interest in that? Or? I think it would be fine. We'd probably need to. John and I could kick around some ideas for that. Yeah. If you wanted, 
it, it may be that some week. of the components that are in here fall easy, more easily into that and then help to streamline the number of That's goals true. potentially. Does that make sense, Bob? Yeah, especially if you're going to go in that direction. We review the goals two or three or four times a year. Yeah. If you're going to go in the other direction, I'd also suggest you do some kind of a mid-year update or review oh, to make sure everything is on yeah. track. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. That's Would the that standard these days you? is to do a mid-year review really? anyway. So. <laughs> Would that be helpful to you? Yeah, very helpful. Yeah, I, I like the format that's beyond goals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help if you accomplish all the goals and the end of the year no one's speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, first one is to finish the reorganization we started last year. There's two vacant positions, the first two. Uh, internally, we've had quite a lot of discussion about the top one, and I'll just highlight it by saying that's going to be a, a communications director-like position. Mm. Um, the third item is a new one that John Doherty and I have just talked about a couple times briefly, and it, it comes out of the EDSAT, I'd say, largely. Um, it gets to the idea of communicating with the public and marketing, if you will, um, and he's willing to discuss sharing a position that would be community-wide and be some type of uh, media relations information. You know, we'll discuss that, whether it's an employee or a consultant or what method we use, I don't know. Uh, next one is, is more of an internal thing. There's some human resources planning that we need to do. The first is to finalize the uh, pay and class study. We had a nice meeting today with the consultant. We're on a nice track. We should be good to go for November 2014. We're uh, updating job descriptions and other backup information, which in some cases is, is 12 to 15 years old. So it's a really helpful exercise. And some of the jobs haven't changed a bit in 12 or 15 right. years, but some of them are completely different. So the technology job descriptions from 15 years ago were, were quite interesting. I bet it was. <laughs> um, we have a new human resources administrator, mm -hmm. and we're having some transition. And in that sense, I don't mean issues. I mean she does things differently. She brings a new set of eyes. Um, having a background in Lawrence has been very, very eye-opening for me. Well, I <laughs> she says, oh, this is a big deal. We had this all the time in Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, part of the reorg last uh, fall was uh, to do professional development, investigation, mm -hmm. and planning, and so we want to continue doing that. There are two sets of personnel policies. I'll get to one of them later, but one of them is internal. And I want to have HR just review the personnel policies. And in the past, we, by and large, have not run a lot of things past town council. And I want to start doing a little more of that, or, or labor council. Um, for communication, this is something I know we've all talked about. We need to improve the communication among all boards. And I'm certainly open, as I know you all are, to figuring out a way. Uh, we talked about chairs, vice chairs. I don't know of other ways. Um, liaisons are the selectmen and me can drop in on a lot of boards and schedule ourselves an agenda item. Maybe that's a better first step, and then maybe the second step is to get people in a room. I don't know. Well, you know, if that, if you take, if you, if you and, and one of us, whoever the liaison is, make a visit and issue an invitation personally, right. I think that's going to mm -hmm. go a long way to get, yeah. you know, the chair and the co chair, or, you know, the vice chair to take it seriously, which, you know, it's not that they wouldn't, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes in and out of your email box. And, personal you know, approach I mean, it, important. Uh, to personalize yeah. it that way, I think, is a really good first step if we really would, if the real goal, and I think it yeah. should be, is to get everybody in a room. I, I just don't know that we can get Bob at all of them. I can so find I other people say, that help. I okay. would say, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I think that having the liaisons do it along with maybe yeah. someone from town yeah. staff, and it's not necessarily Bob, but yeah. someone else. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can be you can join in whenever yeah. your right. your schedule mm -hmm. permits. I guess. That, yeah. I mean, we've got this thing split by five, right. so to try to drag you to everything right. is yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. not fair <laughs> to your time. You wouldn't see me much on Tuesday. <laughs> no. um, I, you know, I'll say, John. John and I went to one board meeting that, if we hadn't been there, would have ended far differently than us being there. And I think for the far better that we were there, and the communication was excellent. So I think the hands-on approach would be very helpful. <laughs> Uh, in terms of policy, I think it's time for the board to review its own policies, and I've listed them here, and they're on the website. Um, occasionally they come into play, and, and you have a key Article 6 personnel-related policies. You're really the bo body that sets the bulk of the personnel policies. We should probably give them slightly different names. 
so this board sets most of the personnel policies as yeah. opposed to the HR administration? There's a set of both, but you, you set very broad guidelines okay. for many. And then sometimes the town manager has little things that tuck into it. For instance, social media policy. You don't do that, I do that. To me, it's kind of an overlap. But mm -hmm. uh, so I these seven articles haven't been reviewed in some time? I, I couldn't tell you. Have you ever remembered? Well, probably about seven years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that needs to be reviewed a little bit <laughs> more often. So that. this this will be um, huh? I'm going to say the initial part of this will be worked <coughs> largely on all of you because you need to decide what you want. I can't mm -hmm. decide that; no one else can. I'll look through them and try to kind of figure out logical things that might need to change to reorganize to make it clearer, if any. So I don't know I mean, of any. Does it make sense to have these assigned out? Probably. Yeah. And then you know. I think you might want to report to the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think you might want to consider having two people on each, just in yeah. case. Yes. I mean, when I, 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 I can't, if you have just one, you're only yeah. going to get one set of ideas, yeah. And, yeah. and that's probably not a good idea. Um, but I do think the rather than five of us, six of us sitting here, you know, hashing it out, I think if these get assigned out and we do a little side work, um, it brings a report back to all of us, makes it easier to. There's another two. dimension of this too, which is, <coughs> I suspect in, over the course of however many years, some of the, some of the aspects of these policies have already are already known to have contain rough spots or catch points. There's probably no way a review on this board is going to find them. Yeah. It would be helpful to know from the towns from the folks who've done this for the last dozen years. Where are the are the problem cases in here that we ought to pay particular attention to that don't catch the eye upon a kind of a clean read, mm -hmm. where the as as uh, implemented doesn't match the right. as designed. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, we can help with kind of the, the, the read over, but I fear that's probably the more okay. damning structural problem in some of these, if there is one. We'll make sure to look those over and, and give you lots of feedback. You know, and as I look at it, I'm thinking again of the charter and how it was formed 25 years ago and some of the discussion, John, that we had that night we went. Um, you know, DPW was in the charter in a very formal way because it used to be a different board. Right. Mm -hmm. Other people that look like DPW aren't in the charter, but for a historical reason, there's no sense. So I'll look at these. I'm just looking public works, community services, HR, and public safety. Those, those, you have those policies. Well, why? Why, yeah, why do we need why special help? Why yeah. them and him? That's yeah. So I'll, I'll look at that. That's part of it, but also what's what's broken there that yeah. you've kind of tripped over before. Right. And, and you will find, you know, Paula will be your best resource for licenses, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, where are those pain points? Like that's going to be an important thing for us to know because yeah. then we can potentially change those. And then this Or if we don't change them, we know why we don't change them. So either yeah. one. Is what's broken and not working, and what's what what obviously could be made better? Where's the find click fix solution? Yeah, yeah. kind of thing for here. Okay. Well, yeah, we can certainly <laughs> work on that. Mixing my analogy. <laughs> <you get? laughs> We're used to. Um, similarly, the town manager has a number of policies. I couldn't list them because I don't know that they're all in one place. <laughs> That's one of the things I asked Paula to do. She's thrilled. Hopefully some of them aren't still in Peter's head. <laughs> uh, if they are, they're not town manager policies anymore. <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of them written down, and he actually did a good job organizing them. Um, but I think there's also, I think there's different sets. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and some of it, you know, clearly has evolved with technology. Mm -hmm. And these are much more policies that need to change more often. Right. They're not so much long-term, they're operational. Right. Um, town charter, as, mm -hmm. as mentioned. I do want to find a way, a better way if possible, for there to be non-town charter committee feedback into the process. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not willing to accept it, and they don't have to, right. uh, and I'll have this discussion with Alan, then I would like to be able to have the board or someone else sponsor amendments to the charter mm -hmm. as a part of that whole January right. discussion. Yeah. So it's not an all or nothing proposition. Right. Well, I'll, I'll talk to Ray and we'll have to format that, but yeah. So one of the things you and I talked about was the edits that the groups are making, any new set of eyes looking at those edits will not have any benefit of the context, the deliberation, the why is this edit being made, what's the rationale and why is this there. And having some sort of footnote or call out or mm -hmm. parallel document that says, 
upon review, here are the following issues. We weighted them, and here's the results. You have so okay, I get the logic, I get the reasoning. The group didn't have that mm. the, the night that Bob they and I visited it. Now, I don't think they, it wasn't, wasn't intentional. It's just right. that they were so into the details, they all knew it. Do they keep minutes? I, I'm sure. Um, yeah, but not to that level of okay. detail. But if you change the, the, the target of a, of a yeah. paragraph or you charge the em change the emphasis, to you and I, we'd say, well, why important. was that changed? Yeah. And it's not at all clear. So I've asked for either footnotes or some other explanation for any of the major stuff and any of the, even anything that somebody brings up. Otherwise, if, if, yeah. if Kevin asks it, I know there's 10 other people that'll have the question. Right. Right. If they're not keeping minutes at that level of detail, I'm not trying to tell them how to do their job, but you know, if you want something to pass, right. Right. Then you've got to make, be able make to it rationalize easy for the it, you know, mm -hmm. so that people are saying, "Oh, okay, I get it." You know, and um, this and is really important for the voters. Uh, yeah, about town meeting. Yes. town meeting. It's inside baseball. They probably get it, but the voters are going to need the. Yes. Well, the other thing too is if somebody asks a question, from somebody from the charter committee stands up in front of the microphone. That kind of analysis will help them be on point when they're responding. Mm -hmm. Without that, I mean, nothing's more undermining than to have somebody not quite sure why it says what it does kind of, you know, not willing to say I'm not really sure and it doesn't have a crisp answer. Yeah. Or maybe it's a person that wasn't necessarily in favor of that. Or, or that, yeah. Well. So <laughs> could, I, a suggestion might be they break it up, you know, yeah. one person take five pages and try to do footnotes for them. Yeah, it's not even minutes. It's footnote the document. Yeah, footnote right? the document. Yeah. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Yeah. And I would, uh, this will take a lot of discussion with uh, Alan and the town council, but I would like to understand how we can break it up to as many articles as is needed if it's just sort of pass fail. Mm. Yeah. And make sure, if, if just like zoning, some of it gets done, some of it might not. You don't want one issue to sink the whole thing. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Bite sized pieces. Yeah. Um, zoning bylaw update, everyone knows what that process is. I, I thought it was perhaps useful to review other town bylaws. It's a topic that have come up, uh, you know, with you folks in the past. Uh, for the other, if you have any suggestions, I just listed the two that I've heard the most often. How about EDC? I would put that in there. Well, they don't have bylaws, but I think I think that might be in the future section, role of EDC or something. Mm -hmm. On page 26, services, the um, inventory of services and the ways to gather data and measure the services are part of that Reading 2020. Um, I thought it was helpful to specifically make sure for the inventory that we try to get a sense from the private and the nonprofit sector in, in town or in the area what, where the overlap is. So if we do something, mm -hmm. we put out fires. Does anyone else do that? Well, no. It'd be good to know because that, that lets us know if we have options. Um, I, I think as a general statement, number 11 is important. Uh, tonight maybe the C-click fix is one example of that, but we need to provide real simple, real easy to use ways for people to communicate. However, we also need to make sure those ways are doable on our side. Mm -hmm. So if we make it really easy, and this has happened over the last five years, it's much easier now for people to comment to us, email, mm -hmm. midnight, it doesn't matter. That hasn't made it any easier for us to respond. Right. Right. So we need mm -hmm. to make sure if we're giving out this nice opportunity for C Click Fix for the whole organization, we have a staffing plan and a, and a method that can actually <coughs> respond. Well, and or or it's setting the expectations of the people who are applying. It saying this is this is what you can expect in terms yeah, of some response. You might not here for it's, ten days. We're, we're not here twenty four seven, and so yeah. you know. Is there a way to just on that point? Is there a way to use that similar tool for feedback? Where instead of complaining about a pothole or a broken branch, you'd say I got a, a heads up on a topic or. Um, yeah, you can use it for anything. I mean, it it happens to mostly be used for geography related issues. Sure. But you could just make a general comment and just put your address, put town hall, make up a name, do whatever you want, and say, I don't like the way X is done. <coughs> there's, there's no limiting factor. Now, we, again, we've only chosen to use DPW, so there's another category that would have to cover a lot of yeah. things. I would be cautious about doing it, if it, especially if it's an anonymous. You know, people could just That's true. You always have that. Yeah. Very, you know, but you have if that you want to make the, com you know what I mean. You have that problem today with the web right. service. Um, one of the things that came up in the uh, financial form <coughs> seemed to fit under services was um, to make sure, well, this is kind of a spin-off, but we have to make sure that whatever is provided can be executed in the temporary space. Mm. Um, I'll leave it up to them to decide what's provided. 
but until they actually get in there, I'm not sure they fully understand what the one third or one quarter of the space is gonna allow. Mm -hmm. So I know what they're planning to do. I hope it's possible we'll just keep our eye on that. Um, everybody knows they can't be a full library, but they still want to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page 27. There's a couple of things in operations. One is obviously we need to do some work and plan out the next few years for technology. Our former town accountant is actually working from Florida right now doing this very thing. And she works from 2 to 5 a.m. usually when the rest of us are off the systems. So she's doing some pretty intense work. 2 a.m. to 5 a.m.? Yeah, and then she says she goes to the beach. <laughs> Not every night, just once in a while. <laughs> Um, I think as a as an organization we should review all of our current regionalization efforts just mm -hmm. to make sure they're on track or not and and discuss what future opportunities are out there um, five of us from four other towns had breakfast this morning and discussed a couple of the issues in 15 for instance animal control being a big one mm -hmm. um, as an organization we've only just started to centralize procurement uh, Jane who was in there earlier is our mm -hmm. chief procurement well I I'm the chief procurement officer. She's the one that really knows what she's doing. Though. <laughs> she's actually certified. Um, Joe Huggins also has some certification, not quite to her level. Mm -hmm. I probably want to have a third person and have him be as as, as good as Jane is. Mm -hmm. DPW is the most sensible place to have that because uh, they do the most procurement. Um, she's got a pretty nice website to give a lot of information out, both to solicit bids and to show things we've sold. I just want to make sure it's 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 all out there and uh, in fairness to Jane um, you know she was reorganized if you will in November right. until Joe Huggins was hired in June she was still doing her DPW job in addition so she's had pretty limited bandwidth and done a great job with what she has she's still not fully extracted from DPW but we're getting closer <laughs> Public health and public safety are next. I think we want to have a look at the public health division as uh, John Halsey and I have, have learned and the Board of Health is on board to that. Uh, they understand that we've asked them basically to master plan their division. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be willing to do that with other groups and other boards if they want. No one has asked, I have not asked. I think we should look at our CASA. I think we did that informally a year or two ago. Um, I, I know I was part of that, but I don't think the board ever learned of that. And I don't think you ever heard much. And I think it's important that just in the public's eye, we, mm -hmm. we tell you why our CASA exists, what it's doing, uh, what other resources they use. They really are phenomenal. The thing that's really difficult to do is measure them. I was going to say, I, that's one of the things I'd like to see on here is measurement yeah. um, and, um, of some type because um, I, I think that, that um, I know it's difficult, but I think it needs to be done. You know, they have data. They'll show you data. It's the, the data doesn't data necessarily, doesn't necessarily develop a, measure a quantifiable things, though, measurement. Right. And yeah. It's yeah. not going to be easy, but I think that I think most of the people on the board are open to that discussion. Sure. It's a question of figuring out how. how. I mean, right. I don't think that's... It's not an easy area to measure in, by I think, any means. I think part of the problem is when, when groups hear the word measure, they think improve. And in this case, measure might just mean measure. It might not mm. mean <coughs> yeah. that you can track or use that as a barometer of improvement, but it gives you a sense of where the groups, what the group's doing, how well they're doing, how many services are being rendered. That's a lot different than, mm -hmm. I mean, some of this is beyond their control. They're really trying to contain it at some <coughs> level. So I'd be fine if it was just reporting uh, results, even if it didn't necessarily yield immediate improvement. That's your first step. I'll tell you, and, and John Halsey, you might want to jump in. The, the one statistic I did see them report that seemed to be very clear measurement and reporting was the amount of kids that were in, uh, I don't remember the exact term, I'll say an intervention program, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the ones that relapsed was extremely low. Yeah. So that the pro that clearly, and it was a new program done in Reading. So Perfect. 80 kids, 78 never came back. Something so like that, that was tied to something that they're doing in concert with the Jim Cormier. Yes. Yes. And it was highly successful. And yeah. I think 
Marcy, I think that's, that's exactly that's the type of thing for. I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if 78 uh, never yeah. gets to 80, you still get a sense that it's highly now, effective. Right. You know, that's you know, if, that's a very different statistic from if they're doing the, the surveys and right. who's right. doing what. Well, if what. they're doing 100 kids and then they have 99 come back, you you go, you know what? We probably need to rethink the program. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I, I, think I think it's that valuable. I, I to have actually it, do believe that, that we can dig for more of that kind of thing mm -hmm. that, that Bob just referenced. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because they clearly have done they, they, they've done some innovative things mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily well known. Right. That that needs to you know be more well known because it's not a secret. Sure. I mean, yeah. the, the good things that they're trying to innovate. Um, it's uh, and it's. It's a very intense problem that is t that so many different pieces of the community touch it. It's yeah, not like, yeah. okay, we got our cost, so we're going to fix this. Mm -hmm. it, it's clearly not, not that. And um, we've got a great police force, and that's not enough. I mean, <coughs> and uh, oh, our, what are the schools doing? And it really isn't. It's, oh, oh it, I know it's, it's not easy. It's none of those cells. So it's not, it's not easy, but to the end game of what it, what they're trying to accomplish, boy, it'll speed it up. If you can yeah. figure it out. Oh yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, is this a candidate for, or maybe not regionalization, but best practices? I mean, there must be other communities that are doing something like our even if yeah. they're not. Mm -hmm. We might are. be the donor. Mm -hmm. They are, but we seem to be the lead dog here, in in, in many respects. Many, At least yeah. that's that's the impression I have, and we can certainly. That doesn't mean we should stop. Right. Seeking what everybody else is doing that's working well, but well, there's uh, part of that. But is there any economy of economy of scale is the wrong word here, but is there any better operation or better performance you can get out of a larger cross town? You know, I, I will say there's a lot of collaboration and uh, mutual aid, I'll say, for a better lack of a better term. Um, Ruth Clay, since she shared in three communities, is part of this effort mm -hmm. in Melrose and Wakefield. She's in charge of the effort in Reading, she's not, but she's still very well integrated. Um, and I know Erica, who is in charge of the program, probably talks to a dozen communities on a very regular basis already. Some of them formally. We are in different formal groups on different topics like opioids. We're in a very formal group with a grant. <coughs> so there's a lot of that going on. And again, this is a group that, you know, at the board meetings we hear things, but the public doesn't necessarily hear all the same things. And and again, John's right, there's no secrets. How much of it's interesting to the public well, or not, I don't know. It falls into some of that communication. Yeah topic right of right. communicating where things yeah. are going well or things are going in the right direction yeah so. the last bullet I added could have just as easily included police but I should I think the model should be looked at from how it's integrating into the other departments um, emergency management is not something we normally have discussed to the board and again there are some secrets there but not, we've certainly discussed plenty of things um, I think we need to um, mostly tip our cap to the fire chief who's in charge of this. Um, he could come in with five minutes notice and give you a full presentation on this. And I think he should be allowed to do that. And I think um, it's, it's all stuff that wouldn't be an executive session. It's, again, it's just a real overview of how we're poised. And again, this is an area that's uh, also very heavily mutual aid. We're in some formal agreements. We have lots of informal agreements. It overlaps in a public health. And, and, and interestingly, in this particular area, we have a lot of um, contact with Essex County, which is unusual in most other areas. So he, he has a whole different population he deals with than we usually do. Uh, but you I know, think you should learn the about The fire it. in town this week was amazing. Mm -hmm. We got three communities that responded. What well, Ruben was covering our firehouse while yeah, our guys were down there fighting yeah. the fire. It was really amazing. And I think what, what Wakefield and Stone came too, didn't um, they? Is it Haven Street or is it into Haven Street? I think. It was, on, sure. it was on Haven Street. Was it on? Okay. Um, would it be possible, or maybe I'll ask it differently, would it be useful to the board to hear maybe some greater details in executive session? Um, I'll leave that up to the fire chief. It may be. Um, again, most of it's not secret. It's just not, a, not that interesting for most people. I, you know, the fact we're preparing for 17 different ways the world could end is probably not that interesting for most people. <laughs> You might be surprised. Hey, yeah, I suppose. Doomsday so Preppers is very preppers. popular <laughs> in my house. That might be the highest yes. ratings oh. we'll get. Maybe we'll do that one on Halloween. I'll tell you what it's scares me. But I can tell you it's very popular in my house. Where's the bunker? <laughs> Cor coronal discharges from the sun. We almost got wiped out by one in 2012. It's like a giant EMP that would render our 
Full technology. That's why I still yeah. use paper and not yeah, right. smartphones. Yeah. Our phones will work. Oh, is our that phones the reason why? Work. Okay. So it, it's a serious issue. We're not yeah. doing anything to harden our, our systems, and that's a much bigger problem than we can address here. But well, I think there's one of those going on right now. I finally shut my phone off because oh. it called the last friend of mine that I spoke to. It's called it 15. It's called that person 15 times while we've been sitting here. Oh, no. So I think there's a sunspot. Going on there. Sunspot. That's my last report. And uh, the last part of 19, just to mention it, as part of the reorganization, the fire chief actually asked for three positions. One of them got put in the budget. Uh, one of them did not relate it to emergency managing. So I want to make sure he has an opportunity to present that. And as the fire chief, he's doing at least one and a half jobs right now uh, by being the head of emergency management. That's un unusual in a, in a town of our size. And again, to John uh, Arena's earlier comment about sort of being the leading edge when we do go to these regional emergency management planning uh, meetings, it's, it's a little scary in that clearly Reading will be in charge of any emergency in the area. I mean, nothing against the other towns, but we show up and there's a, a half a dozen to a dozen of us. They show up and there's one or two, and they don't really always pay they, attention. And they don't really know what's going and, on. <laughs> and some of them have even said, well, if that's the problem, this guy will take care of it, <laughs> meaning Greg. <laughs> we'll come to Reading. Uh, uh, last one in this area is, is as you've uh, approved, you know, we have a bicycle and ped plan we'll try to use as is judicious. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Community development, similarly, to complete streets policy, as this opportunities, we'll use them, and that's what the policy says. I don't exactly know how to phrase the next one, so I did the best I could. Um, I think it'd be helpful for the, to the board, especially, to look at the volunteer boards at appoints. Mm -hmm. and make sure the missions are appropriate and then to think about whether the appointments are appropriate. And some of the boards are obviously statutory mm -hmm. um, and some of them are our choice. And whether this is something you want to do in the next year, I don't think it's got any time limit on it, but at some point it seems like an exercise that should be done every five or ten years. Just a simple review. Mm -hmm. Do you have a way to measure the boards? I have mm -hmm. no idea. Mm -hmm. Well, that really hasn't, that's another thing that hasn't been done in a long right. time, I don't no. think. Probably know, never. <laughs> we probably just no, keep and adding them. <laughs> well, and it, and it came up partly because of the Charter Committee and partly because we went to remove, move two boards three or four or five years ago and we didn't really know how. <laughs> so we had the Land Bank and what was the other one? Do you remember? Uh, T Tech, uh, Technology yes. and Telecommunications. Uh, neither one had met, neither one had members, but we still had them. <laughs> <laughs> so. so there was no sunset provision in no. any of this stuff? Mm -hmm. So in the role of Reading 2020, you could imagine that getting the volunteer boards kind of pointed in the right direction, reconstructed with a mission statement, would be really helpful to get that done well, you'd sooner want rather than later. In, you'd want them to be in sync with the, the strategic the plan strategic direction. You know, of, mm -hmm. of the town. I mean, as it stands now, and, the, and again, I think that they're all doing good work. It's just, are we going, you know, are we in ten different directions? Right. Not you know, or, or you know, are we ready to you know, you know, pull together and, mm -hmm. and and do things? And I think the answer is it's more of the second than the first. Um, I, I think that the, a lot of I think mm -hmm. I think they just lack kind of a central theme, mm -hmm. and and I think it does become incumbent on us as we really do create the point those you know. Mm -hmm. um, to, to give them that central theme, give them, you know, to offer leadership there, not to lead their committees, but you know, to you know, to develop a, an approach for them, so that everybody's kind of pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. I'd go further. I think we've actually we got to take the arrow on this in that not just this board, but the pre even predecessor boards have, to some extent, viewed these as autonomous organizations that come in periodically to brief on their mission. They're really arms, and to some extent working on things we sh we think or used to think were important. And the mm -hmm. autonomy doesn't help because they get the sense of independence and it's not a, to your point, John, it's not a coordinated effort. It's, you know, kind of brownie in motion out there. And everyone thinks they're kind of doing the right thing. Uh, so I'd, I'd actually be inclined to, to take this on in bite-sized pieces, but try to do it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. This is something we're going to, we, I mean, when I, when you talk about these things, Bob, these are things that you want to make serious progress, if not complete, yeah. over the next year. Um, 
These are multi-year goals. These are yeah. a lot of these are multi-year goals. Yeah. I thought of telling you it was a two-year plan mm -hmm. or a three-year plan, and I decided let's just leave it open. And that's why your it, prioritization it, will help. Does that make sense well, that we would make some, some inroads in in all of these? Well, no, some, some of these things as we start to look at off. them yeah. don't necessarily belong on Bob's goals. They right. belong on the board of selectmen goals, Correct. or they belong on somebody else's goals. And Which so kind of a whole separate we have to be clear about some yet. of that. Yeah. That stuff. So and to your point, John, some of these are important but not urgent. We can get to them yep. next year. Right. Some of them are yeah. urgent to get done this year, right. and next year it won't matter. Yeah. Sure. Maybe then I, I would ask you in your rankings to issue a ranking on a time frame as well as in the long run, how important is it that this is done? That would be helpful because then something so that's really important might not be urgent. Right. So, Bob, when you send this out in spreadsheet format, you might want to get two or three bullet points as a, as a little cover letter to yeah. you know, mm -hmm. tell us what you're yeah. looking for, what feedback you're really looking for. Okay. So I, I like the idea of having the two different categories. So there's an urgency and a priority. Yeah. I'd say a third might be, is it multi-year? Do we know in advance it's multi-year or it might never end? This might be just that's kind of just maybe a check, you know, Bob. Maybe does, you just does say, I believe <laughs> does this. Does this is job end? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ever done with this? Uh, pretty much, this job doesn't end. But uh, but maybe you maybe you can just tell us you think these are you know multi year or not. So I think twenty three sort of speaks for itself. We've talked a lot about engaging the public and private, you know, and sharing things with them, and we'll right. see where that goes. Yep. A lot of that'll come out of the uh, services study. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that it's connected to the one. Actually, mm -hmm. I was going to say something. <laughs> it absolutely is. You might remember at the financial forum, we talked about this thought of, I think the word we finally wrote down was pruning. Yes. It's probably mm -hmm. more important that we figure out what we're not going to do yeah. to free up the time and resources and attention yeah. span to do what we are going to do. I'm more interested in, and some of that's going to be hard because it's never easy to shut something down that mm -hmm. has got some support, but there's a lot of work here that hasn't even been started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and. I was going to get to it later. Let's just jump to page 32. That's the top section are all the items that the financial forum gave six or more votes to. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the bottom one is constant pruning activities philosophy. Mm -hmm. So these are all things just to remind you and to help you as you decide what's important, what that room <coughs> thought at the time for what mm -hmm. that's worth. Um, 24, I, I think it's time that the community, at least internally, take a look at the Community Preservation Act. Mm -hmm. uh, we took one run at it. it. It failed by a pretty narrow amount. Uh, the landscape is very different now. The matching is much lower. Um, but there are communities that use it very effectively and very mm -hmm. judiciously. And um, there's a community that's going to propose it um, within the next uh, 12 to 18 months that, for instance, exempts over 70-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So there are creative ways to use it also, and, mm -hmm. and it kind of ties into the next goal, which is affordable housing. It can provide a source of funds, for instance, mm -hmm. for the affordable housing trust fund, which doesn't really have a source right now. Um, the board in the past um, you know, has had that issue uh, in front of them a couple times with the housing authority. Um, there doesn't seem to be any obvious path forward, but that doesn't mean we should just forget about it. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if this is a town manager goal. It certainly is going to be up to town meeting. Oh, absolutely. To act, mm -hmm. We just need to provide information. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a, the board should probably have a healthy debate on yeah. the wisdom of going forward with this. Too. Yeah. Um, and then um, as part of affordable housing, there are some parcels in town that do uh, lend themselves to possible development. I'd say more medium scale development. <coughs> Where's something like Oakland Road play in here? Uh, I don't exactly know. Um, it could be a uh, small scale uh, affordable housing development, for instance. Uh, I think we looked at it a number of years ago, and the number I that's sticking in my mind is 20 or 24 units uh, cluster, you know, a couple of buildings, fours and sixes in them. We're currently looking at uh, industrial zone properties. Some of these are private, mm -hmm. most of these are private, some of them are light department. Yep. And then the DPW site is right there. So we've had a lot of internal discussion about those. Um, we've met with most of the property owners down there, sometimes under adverse drainage circumstances, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, I, I think we need to uh, decide if we want to plan this out and master mm -hmm. plan it. It's not all our land, so there's right. a limited amount we can do. 
but there are clearly open-minded listening people down there right now mm -hmm. they want to know is there a plan for this land because I might be interested you could have a you know, off you how do I play into it in a different exactly in a different location right. in this mm -hmm. you right. Know, right. Master plan right. Mm -hmm. and and I'd say I didn't want to put it on the list for now but I'd say the same philosophy applies to near the train station the depot sure. near the depot where you have a lot of what I would describe as industrial uses the automobile shops that could all be much more retail developed multi fam um, uh, a mixed use mixed use mm -hmm. uh, that's years off but right. that could be another smart growth district mm -hmm. that are just wrapped it around and i know in the past some of the residents objected but mm -hmm. doesn't mean it should go away right. uh, and lastly there's on this section is the parking and traffic and transportation improvements i'm going to find a way to rename that group because there's too many t's i keep yeah. forgetting <laughs> <laughs> i think we'll make three Surely. letters three letters is all we need Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of already tired at this point. But on page Bob, this is way too many goals for any well, one person. Just, just, just so you know, well, like going, you know. It depends how many five, years. five is what they tell you now wow. when you're in in business. Like I, I five. I thought it was better to list so. them all and have you give me feedback. Thirty-seven, yeah. huh? All so right. anything you can't fit on two hands, you can't manage. Okay, is another <laughs> saying. <laughs> Um, page 30 is probably way the past past that. That. Way past this that. is the biggest amount of work a volume of work I think on this page obviously not by the town manager just by staff I, I, I think it's time to review the whole recreation situation we've doing it piecemeal mm -hmm. Birch Meadow being an example um, you know let's just take a, a half a step back from that and just look at what we have and have John Fudo tell us again he could come in in five minutes from now and tell you all this uh, let's let's hear that Mm -hmm. If there's a uh, land in, in town or there's an opportunity to expand what we're doing, we all know the demand seems to be there, but let's get John to formally tell us all this. <coughs> um, in addition, I, I do want to discuss resource sharing. We've discussed that with Wakefield. We came very close to an agreement. Um, they were reluctant because it was all or nothing. We could have hit a more happy medium, I think. Let's explore that with other communities. Yeah. And when I say resource sharing, I mostly mean I want to sail on that lake. <laughs> <laughs> and they know that. So that lake used to be ours. Yes, yes it's it. it was ours. It used to be ours. <laughs> and it could and be one day that. again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, DPW facility, um, you haven't formally heard this, but I'll, I'll tell you tonight that I did finally get a cost estimate for that excellent presentation you saw sometime in late yeah. spring, right. mm -hmm. uh, 18 to $20 million. Oh. So we have $3 million in the budget. I don't think that's going to cut it. So I think it's time for us to really take a hard look at that facility. There's not a lot of options to go, but first of all, if we were starting a DPW works today, we'd not put it there. Right. That's commercial in, in developable land. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to, just like the school department, look for school space. Right. We're going to have to do the same thing. But it, right. the irony is, Bob, that the developable land was created by the need to put the DPW yeah. back there. We had to put a cross yeah. again. Um, yeah, it's we've had some discussions with other towns along those lines of um, sharing our enterprise funds is mm -hmm. the simplest way I can put it. So we, we had some more discussions this morning on that. I think oh, those will yeah. actually go somewhere. Library building project is obviously very important. Mm -hmm. um, the two things I'm, I'm keyed in on are making sure that the impacts of the project as well as all the financial tracking is very transparent mm -hmm. and the communication is good. And, and I think it is right now. And then again, the, it's kind of a rehash of that temporary space issue. Um, I just want to make sure we all keep our eye on it mm -hmm. uh, and not just let the library suffer if that's what's going to happen because, again, they're not living the yeah. life yet. They will soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's yeah. put that shift in library program bullet in there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, did I put that, that, that somewhere else? That was yeah. somewhere else, wasn't it? It's, it's in the, the bullets from the. Uh, yeah, it is. Skull session. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll put that under there. How many straight days do you stay up to do this? I did this today. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I took can tell by the volume. <laughs> it takes longer to produce the market dense stuff. I took one piece of paper like this last Friday, and okay. it sat on my desk empty until Sunday. <laughs> and then I said, all right, I'm going to list all the things I can think of that can only fit in one page. So I did. I have it in my desk. So, so you wrote then, microscopic? <laughs> um, it's messy. <laughs> and then Jean saw it Monday and she took a photocopy and said, I'll start writing up this for you. So she got a part way done and I finished it today. 
But again, it's meant to really just be a list. It's not terribly organized or detailed. It's a start. Um, West Street Project, again, that communication of that will be really important. Permanent Building Committee, you know, we'll see where that goes. That's important. And lastly, but not least, is finance. Some of these are a rehash from last year. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to have a, a little more fuller discussion as we go into this two-year budget discussion and long-term planning of our long-term liabilities. Um, you know, the pension fund is, you need to better understand the shape it's in, let's say, and you need to better understand our OPEB liability. And um, I'm sorry to next tell you the shock that's going to follow with C. Uh, and the superintendent knows this too. We had a meeting with our health insurance consultant and our, all our unions last Thursday. And the going rate for health insurance next year is 8 to 11 percent nationally, plus 3 to 6 percent because of federal mandates. So we should be looking at 11 to 17 in our budgets. We've been using 6.5. So John and I talked about it. We talked about it again yesterday at breakfast. Uh, I'm putting in a 14% now as an assumption right in the middle of the 11 to 17. So that, that's, it's really disappointing news. The 8 to 11 didn't surprise me. The fact that that did not include some of the federal mandates yeah. really surprised me. But he was very clear. Well, how, could, how can it be 8 to 11 without the mandate? None of that's mandate influence? No. What, what, what the heck is that from? I don't know. You know, Clearly, well, it, you know, it's a function of who's insured, how they're insured, yep. and who's being, you know. It's sicker people are getting who's, insured. Who's paying yeah. what for who, yeah. not themselves. Yeah. You know, well I, mean, I, I mean, if you, if you back into this, just no. kind of actuarially speaking, yeah. I mean, really, actuarially speaking. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to show the up. The fact that it's uh, without mandates, 7 to 11 or whatever you said, is surprising to me. I thought it would be higher than But that. it's the beginning of the hill. Who knows what next year brings. Well, yeah. because they have no, there's no experience here. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. So you've mm -hmm. got to try to, you know, you've got to try to forecast the experience and then back into the revenue stream that's going to support it. Yeah. And, you know, and you've got no history. Yeah. Uh, so, the, honestly, I'm, I'm a little surprised it's that low. I mean, I hate to even say yeah. that. And then the mandates, of course, are going to just power on top of that. I think at 14, you're probably not being conservative. Mm. Well, the other part of this, that if we could go out and uh, double our workforce by hiring all young people, it'd be much lower. Mm. Just think of us as an organization. School department's a little different. But How would our pension fund work out then? It uh, wouldn't work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you got to come to But our, our workforce is aging. We're yeah. not hiring mm -hmm. a lot of new people and young right. people until the 65-year-old retires. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is it's all it's just arithmetic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it is. I mean, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Should be surprising. Yeah. Complicated arithmetic. And, and much as health insurance <laughs> has caused us difficulties in the last 10 years, we've been very lucky compared to any other community. Yeah. Because well, we have contained oh, our costs. Line at a very slow growth rate, mm -hmm. somewhere in the six range, did you say? Um, for years, it was closer to two and a half, three. Mm -hmm. That's stunning. Yeah. 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 You know, in the private sector, that's, yeah. and, you're and three times that. And the two and a half, three was still causing us trouble because our revenues were two. <laughs> so well, these are the kinds of things that are going to be impacting in a strategic plan that has a fixed levy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. Bob, how are the other communities? Did you get any data on other in Reading in terms of that eleven to fourteen? That's nationally, so that's not even Massachusetts. No. I, I better not say what I expect on a bid. It won't probably be seventeen percent. Um, I, I will say that um, our our experience, our actual again statistical experience in health insurance, suggests we should have had higher increases. In Um, we're the next two things well the next three things are, are really sort of housekeeping to some degree mm -hmm. we are reviewing um, the bill printing and mailing we're trying to make a C click fix solution to that if you will to make a lot more electronic mm -hmm. it'll save us money that's not the main reason it just makes it easier for people can, can you actually pay your water bill electronically through your bank now or not Is there a way to do that? you can your power bill can uh, you can, but if you saw the way it works here, you'd laugh at how non-automated it is. Yeah. You can do it. We can't. 
you can't yeah, take so electronic we do payments. it and then it yeah. probably creates more work it does because they're going to mail the does. bill anyway probably yeah. well we still mail a bill yeah. you pay it electronically you're done yeah. the way it then comes to us is worse than if you walked in and that, gave us that's the check. what i've heard yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they actually send a check in the mail yeah the bank does. yeah they send us a whole bunch of money with a whole bunch of things and we have to sort it all out right all right I I understand. Understand. so it's not really automated but we need something better I agree. are there electronic options um the laws have changed, so now they're allowed, but they haven't quite developed yet, but they're starting to develop. Uh, ideally, I'd like to send out quarterly statements to residents and say, here's what you owe. Water, whatever. And, you know, RMLD, let's leave them aside. But that's, that's my ultimate objective. That'd be nice. I don't know how fast that'll happen. But there's no reason. We have all the data. Um, the laws have now changed to allow us to commingle things, which didn't used to be legal. If the software and the systems would catch up to that, um, why would it be any different than you know you getting a credit card bill with all the things you charge, you know a water bill, you know real estate bill, dog license, whatever it is, just here you go. And honestly, it would be it would simplify yeah. people's lives so much. Yeah, yeah. people mm -hmm. people understand single statement billing. Not, that's not a foreign yeah none of this lost in the mail missed the deadline you know all that would go away yeah and we could figure out a way to do it now but it would make our lives much worse here so we couldn't really handle it the key is to not only present that to you in a quarterly fashion but an easier yeah, way for need, us to handle need to have a streamlined it. Yeah. yeah you shouldn't have to hire three people in order to be able to do that right exactly uh, it actually should work the other way um, the town accountant is leading a town-wide review of fees. I think the way we left it today was it was much more sensible to ask department heads what fees need to change rather than just comprehensively mm -hmm. identify every fee. Yep. So we're going to discuss that Thursday morning. Um, my guess is you won't see a lot of suggestions for lowering fees. Um, by and large, we're generally a little on the low side. You remember the ambulance billing discussion. We're pretty similar. And again, that's a philosophical <laughs> question. It's not up to any of us to decide what the right fee is. That's for you. You just need to get good information. Right. Um, there's nothing wrong with giving the benefit, you know, a, the residents a break in some way, as long as it's a conscious decision, not an accident. And, and as long as it's communicated. Yes. Because that's the other thing that I. I, I yeah, like if you're. Yeah, I don't want to keep rehashing that, but we don't. People don't know what they're getting for what they're spending, and it's a pretty, it's a really good value proposition. Mm -hmm. The fact that they don't know that is not a good thing. Yeah. You know, we need to be, be sure that they understand the value proposition and how, how hard um, people are working to try to continue to keep that as a high value proposition. Yeah, there's more and more efforts around us to have trash fees, for instance, just because it's a way effectively around two and a half. Um, we don't do that. We could. You could vote that in. Well, people that are right coming away. to town realize well, that yeah. you could, you, except the 20 years ago, when was it, 19, yeah, it was, when there we was did a our first override made. in 1983, we had a trash fee. The deal is, pass the override, we'll put trash under the... So, 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 so those of us who were there then will probably not support that. Town Council has advised me that a promise that says forever is only good for 20 years. So, so I know, and, I know that. and that actually doesn't make any sense anyway, to make a forever promise, because... No, I'm making a Things personal promise. Change. Yeah, we didn't make the promise then. We said, if you do this now, yeah, well, we'll take, we'll, we'll rescind the trash fee. And we did it then and now. We didn't make it. We couldn't buy in any future selectment. Yeah. You have to undo, unring that bell. But, hey, there are people are going to remember that. Too. Yeah. yeah, they will. Well, it's going to. It would be very difficult to ask for an override for trash right now. Yes. Oh, sure. sure. Thirty years from now, maybe. Now, no, you already yeah. did that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing is is on Sharon's list. Uh, it came from the auditors last year as developing a fund policy. So there, I'll send you that electronically right. probably over the weekend. Right. What, is, uh, what is GASB 54 precisely? I think it had to do with um, putting the FinCom reserve policy in a different format and having all the different funds we have sort of form of. So <clears throat> you're going to distribute this in some form of a matrix? I'll make it into some sensible matrix that you can okay. give opinions on, and I'll also give you the ability to give feedback of what's not on the list. 
Well, the way you build it will yeah. dictate the feedback. That's why I want to take so, a couple of days and really think yeah. about it, how to make it easy. And then I'll want to share the answers with everyone at the next meeting. So. Right. And if mm -hmm. not the next meeting, the one after, but we'll shoot for the next one. 14% you are going to be looking for places to prune. So. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Any other comments Prone. before we uh, move on to minutes? Yeah. Let's see. In the, in the material Paula sent out was the uh, minutes from July 29th. July 29th. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of July 29th, 2014 as amended. Second. Okay, any comments or changes? Well, I, have I a actually question. had a couple of changes that I sent to Paula. Um, I don't remember what they are, though, Paula. <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm not hooked into the internet, so I can't look those up. But truly, I don't remember them. It was three days ago. I am done. Do you, oh. you want them? Just, um, it, w it wasn't a lot, but um, I can't tell actually if Arnie or what. This is where we, that's not this. The thing no, I handed exactly. out tonight is different. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's different. That's, that's for the executive this, session. Yeah, this yeah. is that. This, this is, is the material yeah. policy sent out electronically. And I think what you have Thursday. is, are your, yeah. probably your comments mm -hmm. on, on this thing that was handed out tonight? No. No, it's not. Yeah, these are July 29th. This is July 29th. And just so um, related to the RMLD trucks, um, what I said is I'd been contacted by an RMLD CAB yeah. member. So I wasn't contacted by multiple members. I didn't contact them. They contacted me about the sale of the bucket trucks for $350. And their specific concerns were with the process and the lack of follow-up by the RMLD commissioners. Yep. The other note I had was that... Um, Cinder Romer indicated criterion is unlikely, I think I misspelled that, to keep any part of that building because it had asbestos and lead. That was her comment. Lead paint, I think. Lead paint. Right. Yeah, lead paint. Yeah. Also, her, her name lead is not. Paint wasn't in the, uh, in the minutes. That lead, right. lead paint, right. The yeah, lead yeah. paint was missing. Right. The other thing is, um, she actually, the, there was a reversal between the number of days suggested. So you suggested five days, I suggested four days. Oh, yeah. Um, and so Flipper. I just yeah. flipped those over. Okay, that's correct. So, and that was it. Okay. Any other changes? Yeah. Cinda's name is, her last name is misspelled in the body, but it is correct at the top of the, uh, you know, you listed everybody that attended. I think it's R O E H M E R. Okay. Paint. And Romer is wrong. Cinda Romer. John, on page six. Was it Roma or Roma? R O H. I think it's at the top correctly. Is that spelled right or wrong? I believe it's wrong. We're talking about bikes here. Uh, John Halsey, this is fourth paragraph up. Indicated. Ready? Indicate he feels if the board adopts the plan, they have to do everything. Did you say they don't have to, or they do have to? Find out. Give me one sec. They, I, w I assume that they don't have to do each. Thing. Okay, then I should say don't. Yeah. At With the moment it says that they do. It says they do. John Halsey indicates he feels if the board adopts the plan, what page? Then they, the bottom. Page six, uh, fourth paragraph up from the bottom. Six. Yeah, I mean, my question was, and this was my concern, mm -hmm. is that are we now suddenly yeah. locked into right. something? Yeah. Do you want to note that down and on there? Sure. Sure. That that was pencil that in. There you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my concern as well. Is this an all-or-nothing proposition? Does this become right. the thing that you come back? And, and the answer was no. So. And that, and that so was that also an answer. Uh, page. Actually, you page just six. triggered another thought. Yes, um, Paul. I'd also asked if the um, uh, Gene or uh, any member of the town. Uh, in the course of contemplating some of the complete streets discussion or the bike lane or the pedestrian plan, uh, at least initially come back and brief the board on the proposed change so that we had yeah. early guidance and directional awareness as to where it was going. Kind of the same thought John was after, so we can get kind of some early uh, assessment for how well it's working. The, the broad category was the bicycle and pedestrian plan? Right. That's it. I think that's it. Any other changes? No. All those in favor of the minutes as amended. Five zero. Thank you. Okay. I think we have if nothing else. We have a motion to go into executive. Move to go into executive Be session. Before you do that, um, do you want to approve the executive session minutes or not yet? Uh, Marcy's got some changes. Yeah. So okay. She wants to take those. We're gonna have to do that in undercover. 
Move to go in executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, and that the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the body and for the approval of minutes and not to reconvene an open session. So I have the minutes. Thank you. Yep. This is a roll call vote. So John Arena, yes. John Halsey? Yes. Dan Ensman? Yes. Marcy West? Yes. Kevin Sexton? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.